Today I want to talk to you a bit about the idea that we should supplement with omega-3 um, polyunsaturated fatty acids for all sorts of so-called benefits that omega-3 oils are proposed to have on our cognitive function and brain function and nerve function in general and all sorts of other things. Um, cardiovascular health is another one that's, that's spoken about there, etc, etc, etc. And I want to talk to you about the idea that we should supplement with such oils uh, from the standpoint and position of, and in the context of, a relatively recent study that was conceived of, put together, conducted, written about, and published in the peer-reviewed literature by a very, very intelligent, very attractive young scientist, nutritionist, and biomedical scientist by the name of Pim Johnson and some other clown that she was working with for some reason on that study. Anyway, what did those authors do? Well, what they did was they did a pilot study, and that's a caveat. This is a pilot study. This is a starting point. More work is required to establish the prevalence of this problem. What problem is that? Well, the problem is they took a number of commercially available omega-3 supplements bought across the counter at pharmacists, otherwise known as drugstores in the US, uh, on the recommendation of the store person's, sales person's recommendations as to what is a good omega-3 supplement. And they took those back to the lab and they put them in a very, very technical, very, very multi-million pound expensive machine in the laboratory. And they tested those omega-3 oils for oxidation products. In particular, they were looking for a very, very cytotoxic, very, very dangerous uh, oxidation product of inherently unstable oils, such as polyunsaturated fatty acids like omega-3. And they were looking for aldehydes. Anyway, did they find aldehydes in the commercially available omega-3 supplements? Oh, yes, boys and girls. Yes, they did. Two out of three commercially available omega-3 supplements were rancid, basically, were oxidized to some level or another, specifically with aldehydes, which are extremely dangerous highly cytotoxic at even minuscule amounts. Any amount of aldehyde whatsoever in one of these products is a big, big problem um, in terms of its effect on human cells. What effects am I talking about? I'm talking about the breaking down and destruction of the lipid rafts, including things like the cell membranes of all the cells, um, destruction of cell organelles, cell apoptosis, the death of cells, the activation of alterations to the DNA in the cells, possibly carcinogenic, really, really bad, really, really toxic, really, really dangerous. Two out of three omega-3 oil supplements rancid in the capsules, in the bottles, as purchased across the counter in shops in the United Kingdom, where we were at the time. There's no reason to believe that the problem is any different anywhere else in the world. Um, and as I said, more work is required to establish the actual prevalence of this problem. There is no international standard on this. There is no compulsory testing of this anywhere in the world that we're aware of. It really is a very, very serious problem for you to consider. All omega-3 oils, in my humble opinion, that you take in, in your diet should be derived fresh and as part of whole foods, those being, by the way, meat and animal fat, because that's where you get omega-3 from in the form that the human system can utilize and absorb, are those being DHA or EPA forms of omega-3, as opposed to the plant-based form ALA, which you really cannot absorb, you really cannot use for biological purpose whatsoever, uh, and you also have a very, very limited amount of capacity to metabolically change ALA into DHA EPA. So that is not indicated. Uh, so where do you get your omega-3 from? From food, people, not from oils in a bottle. Um, thanks for that.